Dave, so as you look at reality, what are the mechanisms that you would take uh, to include in a total explanation? Yeah, I'm not megalomaniacal enough to think that I know what all the fundamental ingredients of the cosmos are, but I think, you know, you need certain fundamental ingredients here. You need physics. That's got to come from somewhere. And physics, on the other hand, it looks like, at least as we currently understand it, that's not enough. You need consciousness. We're subjectively experiencing beings, and that's another additional fundamental fact about the world. And you're going to need to find some fundamental way to put those two aspects of reality together. So a lot of physicists like to think that physics is going to provide you a theory of everything. Physics explains chemistry, chemistry explains biology, and so on up. But even, you know, an honest physicist has to admit that so far, this isn't making much progress on explaining consciousness. So to, by the same principles that drove us to, you know, expand our theories of physics to explain ele electromagnetism and so on, we need to expand our theories of physics to explain consciousness. It's just a consistent thing for a scientist to do. So are we expanding physics to explain consciousness, or is consciousness something that is unexplainable by physics? Well, in a way, all this depends on what you want to count as physics. I think you need to bring in further fundamentals into your theory. So far, we just had space and time and mass and charge. I think you need to bring consciousness into the picture. Now, if you like, you can call this a big, pluralistic, happy physics <laughs> that includes consciousness, <laughs> or you can call it physics plus. You know, the old physics plus a new thing. I don't think it matters what we call it. Well, it does to some people, because if you expand physics, then you have a, a radicalized physics, a bigger physics. That's one view. Another view, say, there are really two different worlds, and the world of consciousness leads us to some theistic realm, to some realm of spiritual realm, or, or, or it, le it leads us to God. Well, I think there's just one world. And it's all a natural world, and it has many different aspects. So physics, as it currently stands, explores some aspects of it, and consciousness you know, gets us maybe at other aspects of it. And there's nothing in that picture to lead one to suppose that there, there couldn't be a scientific theory of it all. Bits of physics, bits of consciousness. I don't see anything so far that forces us to postulate you know, gods, angels, demons, spirits. Consciousness is just another natural phenomenon, just a different one. Where are you drawing the line between natural and, and not natural? I think what makes a picture natural is ultimately generating the complex from the simple. Simple entities governed by simple laws and principles. So in physics, we have simple entities governed by, by simple physical laws. On the picture I advocate, you can have simple entities, particles, consciousness governed by very simple, systematic, encompassing laws. Now, to bring God into the picture, suddenly you introduce this extraordinarily complex entity with its extraordinary intellect and powers and benevolence, omniscience, omnipotence. Suddenly you've gone way beyond the explaining the complex in terms of the simple. You've postulated ultimate complexity, if you like. Why not take the scientific attitude here? Believe in what you're forced to believe in. Take Occam's razor. Don't multiply entities without necessity. I think in the case of consciousness, we're simply forced to go beyond what the physics-based view of the world gives us. It doesn't explain consciousness, a natural phenomenon that obviously exists. Therefore, we need here yeah, some further simple entities. Now, there's nothing like that, I think, that forces us to postulate God. There's no phenomena which th that can be explained with God, I think, that can't be explained without it. Now, you know, some people think there are such phenomena. If you have the relevant kind of religious experience or miracles and so on, then fine. All I can say is I haven't yet seen conclusive evidence to believe in those things. I do have conclusive evidence to believe in consciousness.